Okay. 25 and 3. Okay, so you're probably looking at this and going 25 and 3 is an absolute insane win rate and I want the deck right now so I can climb to legend. But I promise you, if I gave you the exact same deck, you're probably not going to go 25 and 3. But rather than giving you the code or just giving you a gameplay, I want to talk about why I was able to do this and what you could do to help your win rate climbing up in the Hearthstone ladder. This video is also not meta specific, so you can come by in any expansion or any metagame and this whole video will still be applicable to your situation. People have this weird idea that if they take the best deck in the game, they're just going to automatically get to legend or whatever rank they desire because it's the best deck in the game. But I'm here to tell you that's not the case at all. A lot of the time it comes down to the individual player of the deck that lets you get to the highest rank in the game. But instead of focusing on the individual deck, what we could do is focus on the individual things I did with a particular deck in order for you to have the best win rate possible with any deck that you play. The first thing we're going to focus on is how I picked my deck. So I wanted to pick a deck that I actively enjoy in the metagame, but I also think is going to be particularly great in the metagame. It's important that you think about both because you want a deck that you're enjoying as well as a deck that's good. So you're having fun while you're climbing. So what I did to find my deck was I went to vicious syndicate.com. If you don't know what this site is, it's one of the best resources in Hearthstone out there. I went to their most recent data reaper report. Once you get into their data reaper report, basically what I do is I scroll all the way down until I find their VS power rankings. Here we're going to find the rank bracket that is most catered to us. Most players are going to be into diamond one to diamond four. And we're going to find a deck in this rank bracket that we think is going to be fun and that we think is also going to be extremely good. So normally I would go from tier two to tier one and try to find a deck in between there. So for this case, let's say I really wanted to play Beast Root. I would then find the class analysis and deck list section of the Reaper report. I would click on Druid. If you want to read more about the actual deck and why it's good, then we can click that. Then we're going to click Oracle Beast Druid, which will give us their deck list that they are currently using for this Beast Druid. We copy and we paste that into Hearthstone. Once I pick a deck that I want to start playing, I'm then going to go to hsreplay.net, go to decks and find the deck that I want to play. In this case, it's going to be Beast Druid. So once I find the Beast Druid deck in HS Replay, the only thing I really want to do here is look at the Mulligan win rate and see what cards I should look for in my opening hand, because the opening hand here is very crucial for a lot of decks. So in this case, I would want the Frostwolf Kennels, the Peasants, the Adorable Infestation, the Thorn Grove Sentries, or the Druid of the Reef. Basically, you want to go for all of the green looking numbers. Before I even start playing a deck on ranked, I want to go actually into the casual mode in order to play the deck a couple of times to understand its win condition. Now, you might be saying to yourself, why would I play casual? I'm not a wee little baby who doesn't need no casual game mode. I'm only going to play ranked. But here's the thing. If you don't know how to play the deck you're about to play, there is a really good chance that you're going to end up losing it and you're already starting the deck off with a bad experience. By playing a couple games in a casual mode, not only are you less stressed out, but you get a better feel for the deck and understanding what its win conditions are and how you're supposed to be playing it in different matchups. Now that we're actually in game, it's really important that we talk about mobile and how you actually win a game. So we do know that we're going against Warlock, but we still want to go for those green cards that we mentioned earlier from HS Replay. The only card that I really want here is the Throne Grove Centuries, as Arbor Up is a little bit later in the game and Oracle of the Loon is better paired with other cards. Even though this isn't a horrible keep, there are better cards. So because I mulliganed aggressively, I was able to get Peasant, which gives me a better opener, which means I'm more likely to win the game now. It's also important not to be results oriented, which means if I did not get Peasant there, it was probably still the right decision to mulligan to try to find a better opener against probably a pretty bad matchup. Regardless of what the matchup actually is, you always want to try to get the best possible mulligan because that means you have the highest percent chance of winning the game. So now we come to the second decision of the game. And this is another lesson right here is understanding what is the correct play and reflecting after the end of the game. So this is a decision I have to make. I either Throne Grove Centuries or in this case, I Druid of the Reef times two. This decision could be the game, even though it may not seem like it's, but we're going to make one decision. And at the end of this game, we're going to think about what I could have done differently or if this was the correct play. So in this case, these are more flexible. So I am going to go with the Throne Grove Centuries here. Thank you. 
So immediately I actually was punished from this. If I went for the Druid of the Reef, I would have had two one threes on board instead of two one twos, which means there was stuff on the board, which would have made their following turn a little bit more awkward. And that's why reflecting is such an important thing in a game like Hearthstone, because you think about what you could have done differently and apply it to the next game. So if I had the exact same decision against a Warlock, I would go with the two one threes instead of the two one twos. And if you keep reflecting after every single game, you'll slowly become a master at the deck you're playing, which means your win rate will start improving drastically because you know how to pilot the deck better. So I ended up losing this game to the Warlock and I'm really glad I played a casual game first because I learned a couple things about this. If I lose the board against the deck that can just continuously remove, I will end up losing the game and you can apply this method to any deck. If you're the Warlock in this case, your win condition is stopping me from having a board. And that's why it's important with every single deck to take a couple of games to think about what your win conditions are in certain matchups. If you're a tempo deck going against a slower deck how do you win if you're going against the combo deck how do you win if you're going against another tempo deck what is your win condition there is a lot to hearthstone and just because you pick the best deck doesn't mean you're going to be able to play it well so make sure you practice a couple of games with the deck so you can learn how to play it effectively i've said this a lot in other videos before but one of the things that a lot of people focus on and fixate on is their rank the rank is just there so you get matched with players in your appropriate skill level when you only focus on your rank you really only focus if you win or lose rather than are you playing well or what you could have done better and when you focus only on your rank that usually means that you're not actually learning from the game but rather just saying why well, I lost this because my opponent high rolled or my opponent did this or whatever this also leads you to getting pretty tilted. And if you start getting a little bit tilted, you definitely start playing a lot worse. And this is why I highly recommend you pick a deck that you actually enjoy, because if you end up enjoying the deck you're playing, the losses won't tilt you nearly as much because potentially you had a lot of fun playing the deck. Remember at the start of this video when I said, even if I gave you the deck code, you probably wouldn't get the same win loss as me. And that is entirely true because of what variance is to Hearthstone. Even if you play absolutely perfectly, there is a good chance that you're not going to win every single game. It's important to understand that in a game like Hearthstone, variance is a huge aspect of the game. And when you think about whether or not you drew well, you drew perfectly or you drew bad, the only thing that you can actually focus on as a player is if I made the right plays. So just don't worry about getting unlucky or getting super unlucky. Just try to play as well as you possibly can. And I guarantee you that you will start climbing. Also, if you made it this far into the video, the deck code of the deck that I got legend with the 25 and three quest shaman is on my Twitter. So if you just click the link in the description, you can get the deck code and use the deck that I was climbing with in order to get legend this season. I hope you found this video helpful and feel free to come back to this every single expansion or any meta because this will still be relevant no matter what the cards are in the current game. I want to finish this video off with one of the high rolls that I got during my climb to legend. I hope you end up enjoying this video you look fantastic and subscribe if you enjoyed is it all right i need this five six to hit face please or uh overdrafts lethal lightning blooms lethal primordial studies could be lethal wait what hit face hit face hit face hit face hit face no ah that was so bad please oh <gasps> Let's go. Okay.